Hello and welcome to Out of Spec Motoring. If you haven't already seen our previous series on Gruber Motor Company, definitely take a look. The link will be in the description. Today we're back in Phoenix, Arizona, revisiting Gruber and seeing what they're working on to keep Tesla Roadsters alive. Once again, we are with Pete Gruber as our host for the tour of this episode. If you enjoy these types of videos, please subscribe. We are working hard with a lot of amazing companies to get behind the scenes tours, such as this video here with Gruber Motor Company. Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. Today we're going to take another tour through our facility and show you some of the new things that we've been working on. If you'd like to join me. This Roadster here, by the way, um, was sold at auction in February of last year. And um, it took us a while to get this one running for a number of reasons. But um, it sold at auction as a bricked car and it turns out the people buying it or bidding on it were unaware what brick meant. So within three days after sale, we got a call from the seller and they said, we should really get this car fixed because we're not going to find customers to buy a car that won't run. Um, this car had a level one and level two battery recovery, which means that um, we brought it back to life by pulling a battery pack and changing sheets in the uh, pack. And then we had a lengthy VMS problem, which finally got resolved. And the car is going through test drive right now, and it's uh, performing wonderfully. We start in our lab area here. He didn't come in yesterday. And this is the electronics portion of our service center uh, where we work on power modules for uh, UPS's critical power and uh, Tesla uh, power modules. This is a Tesla Roadster power electronic module called a PEM and um, we um, are finding a number of um, wear items and design issues with this product especially as it ages. Um, one of the most recent things that we found is that these black plastic uh, connector blocks are beginning to age, they're beginning to crumble, and um, this is an example of a connector block that had failed. And uh, what's happening here is there are three captivator nuts that are buried inside this plastic housing and every annual preventive maintenance done on these roadsters requires large heavy um, uh, power cables that go down to the drive motor to be disconnected. All of that stress is placed into that plastic and eventually the plastic crumbles, cracks, and just deteriorates. So this part is no longer available. Uh, the, the, uh, the molds are long gone. So what we ended up having to do was use a 3D print method to replicate this part. And one of the design improvements that we made, actually two, we started making them orange so that it's consistent with the, um, uh, the orange uh, uh, product that is used in the high voltage section on the Teslas. And secondly, we are now taking all of that stress off the plastic and we're pressing PEM nuts into the copper bus bars that run inside the PEM so the plastic no longer gets compromised. This is the um, three-phase AC induction motor block. Then there's a comparable product that goes into the DC input section here. It's the same problem. It's black ABS plastic. Every preventive maintenance, when they remove a PEM, they loosen up all these large uh, nuts and bolts and eventually the plastic crumbles and deteriorates. So we're doing the same thing there. We're actually 3D printing a replacement for this part. When we do work like this, we end up generating a tech tip. And here are just a couple of them that go with the power electronics module for the Roadster. And what this essentially does is it will document what we found, what the corrective action is, and uh, we typically share this with Tesla as well. We find also that as the cars age, as the Tesla Roadster ages, 
certain parts are being improved from the original design. This is the cooling fan motor for the PEM. Um, what we're finding now is these parts are readily available, but they've improved the part. This is basically a 12 volt DC brush type motor. And uh, with age, of course, the brushes wear out, the bearings wear out, and they need to be replaced periodically. Because the manufacturer has actually improved the design, the firmware in the Roadster no longer likes this product and it starts reporting 1146 DMC fan errors. Not because there is a problem, but because this is too efficient. So we're now trying to find ways to equalize or change the threshold in the PEM firmware to accommodate these new parts. Something comparable is happening in the Model S world. This is a Model S MCU. The 17-inch screen sits in front of this and you basically have a Linux computer inside your car. The 2012, 13, and 14 cars now are beginning to manifest in a, a problem with a flash chip which uh, is not robust enough to handle all of the updates and all of the traffic going across it and just simply aging. So what we do is, rather than change the whole MCU, which is extremely costly, anywhere from three to four thousand dollars, we change the chip and we replace it with one that is twice as large, that is more industrial than the original, and this board then gets inserted into the MCU, which is much, much less expensive than an entire MCU replacement. This stand here is essentially a um, Tesla Model S on a bench. Once we have the screen hooked up, we can actually test some of the other uh, CAN bus components from the car, simulating a uh, live car type test. Here we have some recovery chargers. And uh, these were originally built by Tesla. They are a very sophisticated uh, a recovery charging method for a roadster that gets bricked. Um, essentially what this does is it looks at the ESS pack, makes sure that there are uh, no tolerances too far out of the uh, threshold it's expecting and it will actually bring the battery back to the point where the Tesla charge port can then take over and start charging the car again. We're currently repairing two of these and uh, they're ready to be put back in service. Uh, the rest of this lab um, is for repairing critical power components in um, uh, UPS's, uninterruptible power systems, which is really what we've been doing for over three decades, going on actually four decades. Um, this uh, unit here is out of an APC UPS. These power modules are the same technology as what is found in a Tesla car. It's a device that converts DC, a, a, uh, the energy from a DC plant, into three-phase AC. The only difference is what it powers. In this case, in an APC UPS, for example, the, uh, what it powers is a bunch of servers in a data center. In a Tesla Model S, it's powering your AC induction motor, which, by the way, we have the original patent up here on the wall. Uh, this was the patent that uh, Nikola Tesla got for his three-phase AC induction motor. Um, the rest of this equipment deals with um, chip removal and uh, resoldering. These are ball soldering machines here. And the degree of miniaturization inside most of this hardware these days is such that it requires special equipment. Uh, when I was doing this 40 years ago, we used to be able to use a soldering gun and uh, remove chips and troubleshoot and uh, actually uh, do stuff without magnifying glasses. Nowadays, we need special equipment. Um, what we have here is a Tesla Model S door handle. We rebuild these, and I'll show you more of this outside. Um, I think Al this morning has been working on the uh, CAN bus signals to actually uh, make this operate. Here we have a uh, Roadster VMS board, Vehicle Management System board. There is firmware that runs on this board, and it's basically the brains of the car, works in conjunction with the 
with the power electronics module and uh, what we do here is recover and repair these. Um, it's vital that this that we provide this service because these boards are no longer in production. It would be difficult to, uh, to reactivate production lines to make product like this. So what we do is actually repair and recover boards like this to keep the cars running. So in this area, what we do is we build certain Tesla components. These, for example, are window regulators. They are quite repairable. There are some design improvements which can be made. This little piece here, for example, is a plastic bushing. And when it breaks, it snaps here, then the spring no longer loads up that cable. Um, what we do is we make this out of aluminum and we can actually enhance or repair it, which gives it a much longer lifespan. What uh, Tim Gruber is working on here is rebuilding a door handle for, is this a Model S, X, or 3? This would be a Model S, and I'm doing the older and new generation. Okay. Uh, we do uh, tail lights and headlight rebuilding. Um, of course, door handles. And all of these parts are quite repairable. So now we're in the service center again, and uh, we've got a number of cars here. Uh, these are flood damage Model S's that are still in process. Um, this car came from New Jersey. It has an unusual problem in that a couple of sheets are reporting bleed test errors. And uh, the only way to resolve that is to take the sheet out and then do a, um, uh, do a repair and an upgrade, which we're going to do in our high voltage battery surgery area here in a moment when we get there. But you can see what a uh, battery pack looks like out of a Roadster. Uh, almost a thousand pounds of uh, battery pack. Um, we have another one here that we just pulled this morning and some of the footage was recorded. Um, this has one bad sheet. Um, so what we're going to do there is open it up, find a suitable donor pack that matches the, uh, the SOC of the other sheets and this car should be good to go. Um, this car here, all of them have interesting stories. This is VIN number 40. Uh, this was once Matt Damon's car. It's been here for a while. This was on life support for a number of months until we found a suitable sheet, donor uh, sheet. It had one brick that was dying, and uh, if we had let it go below two volts, it would have been terminally uh, gone. So we kept it on a, a DC charger for about three months or so, and we replaced the sheet about a month ago or so, so this car is fully functional again and uh, should be ready to go back to the owner shortly. Many of these cars that you see here come in completely dead. Uh, this one is completely dead. The blue one was dead. Um, the, uh, the gray one is dead up there. Um, usually what we do is we either repair the PEM or the battery pack and sometimes both. Um, sometimes when we do a, a level one, level two battery recovery, the customer decides, since the car is already here, let's upgrade that PEM rather than wait for it to self-destruct and uh, potentially kill the car. Other times we have cars that come here that have been bricked longer than six months. Our sweet spot uh, is around one to six months. If the car has been bricked for one to three months, there's a hundred percent probability that we will bring that car back to life without a battery pull. If it's going on six months, generally it needs a sheet or two. If it's been bricked for a year, like this lightning green roadster, then uh, too many sheets need to be replaced and it's no longer cost effective to do sheet replacements. So they end up waiting for a collision damage car so that we can pull a donor pack and get the car back on the road. This is our high voltage battery surgery area. And uh, what we do here is actually work on the individual roadster sheets. This sheet here is out of VIN number 40. This is the one with the bad brick. And what we're currently doing is keeping it, again, on a charge, life support. It's currently at 3.61 volts. We're putting 300 milliamps into the brick. And um, what we plan to do next with it is using heat signature and current measurements is isolate that one or two bad lithium ion 18650 cells that is holding that entire brick down. Um, what I mean by brick is inside the sheet you have nine bricks which is a collection of 18650 cells connected in parallel. 
those nine parallel connected bricks are connected in series to end up with a string voltage, sheet string voltage of around 35 to 36 volts. Each of these cells in a parallel configuration um, affects the rest of the cell. So if you have one cell that has become resistive, then it will drag down the rest of the cells. The problem by allowing that to occur is with lithium ion chemistry, if you allow the cell to go below two volts, it begins to self-destruct. There's a chemical action that takes place inside the cell. And if you allow all of your good uh, cells to get down below two volts because one resistive cell is holding it down, then they will all self-destruct. So it's important, like in this case, to keep it up at a certain voltage level until we can isolate that one or two bad cells in that sheet. The um, car that we spoke about earlier that is failing bleed test, and we're beginning to see more of that. Uh, we find that with roadsters, because of the age, there are certain um, wear type um, uh, wear type items that are occurring. And one of those is inside the sheets, they originally use rivets to connect the bonding plates, which is a brick connecting point. Um, to the battery management system boards using pop rivets. And you can see one there, you can see one there. There are a bunch of these around all of the bonding plates. The problem with pop rivets is you can't control your clamping force very well, unlike hardware, a nut and bolt type arrangement. So with age, these aluminum pop rivets have begun to expand, they've begun to corrode, and a bleed test is telling us that the pop rivet connection is no longer valid to that, to that battery management board. So what we're doing with those types of problems is replacing these pop rivets with a hardware that is far more consistent and has a consistent clamping force of around 20 inch pounds. The, uh, the battery management board, by the way, looks like this. And there's one of these in every single sheet. This is a uh, microprocessor based board that controls the charging and the balancing of all of the cells in this sheet. There are 621 of these cells inside one of these sheets for a total of 6,831 cells in a battery pack. And this board essentially plugs in the back of this sheet and there's a connector there that uh, then mates with that, um, with that uh, board and provides the battery management system. What we have down below here is a pack of uh, sheets that we are maintaining. These are donor sheets that will be used in cars that need uh, to have some sheets replaced. We tend to make our own tools here and our own equipment. Uh, this is one example. This was a workbench that was scrapped. We took two of the heavy legs off there because with these sheets, you could easily have a thousand or two thousand pounds up here. We then used the aluminum channel, which is part of our um, uh, the network racks that we make in the other machine shop. And this came from OfferUp. This was a countertop that somebody had decided they didn't need uh, surplus. It's extraordinarily heavy. It's stone. And uh, we're using that as our uh, tabletop. Um, some of the other equipment that we end up making, custom tools, here is a ESS sheet. Uh, it's, a, um, um, it's a meter array and we put these on top of the entire pack and it tells us each of the sheet voltages. And we use this extensively when we're balancing sheets inside a battery pack before we put it back up inside the car. It's an important step because if these sheets aren't balanced within about um, five hundredths of a volt, then you end up with a uh, range problem and it takes forever for the pack to balance itself. Um, some of the other tools that we make, well this power supply here, what we're using here is an APC UPS with a 48 volt output, DC output. We run that up to a couple of bus bars on the wall back here so we actually have 54 volts up on that bus bar and these are um, uh, regulated power supplies that allow us to set current limits and voltage limits times five in this case. We can charge anything from a 12 volt battery on up to sheets. Our two main uh, 
popular service offerings here are uh, the uh, the PEM upgrade uh, and a rebuild and the battery recovery. This car is kind of unusual. It came to us, uh, sadly enough, for a battery recovery. It's the only carbon visible carbon fiber roadster that we know of in existence. And um, they would have made the front clip and the rear bumper carbon fiber, but since this was a carbon fiber overlay and the front and back have many compound curves, it's almost impossible to do a carbon fiber overlay with that many curves. So the car essentially has fender, doors, and quarter panel carbon fiber, and then the rear hood latch, or the hood hatch. What we're currently doing with this car is a recovery, and um, this is an R80 pack, which is a pack that Tesla sold for about a year and then suspended. Um, these are different cells than the Legacy Roadster battery packs, which were made by Sanyo Panasonic. These are LG cells, and um, we're finding that the ability to recover these types of cells, or these R80 packs, isn't anywhere near as successful as the old Legacy uh, Roadster battery packs. Uh, this car has been here going on three weeks, and uh, it's just not responding well to recovery efforts. The um, bricks in many of the sheets are uh, down to almost zero volts, which means that some cell damage has occurred. Uh, but right next to it, we may find a brick that has full voltage. Um, no explanation why. There's actually one sheet out of these 11 sheets that is perfect, and the rest of them all have bricks that are seriously compromised. Um, it looks like the only solution for this car at this point is going to be an R80 donor pack or a 3.0 battery pack replacement. The way that we do our recovery is a number of uh, things. We, um, we have different types of power supplies that we do trickle charges with. When we uh, pull a battery pack, these are, um, this is our load bank. We also have small load banks. And these are important when you're balancing the sheets. Uh, inside a battery pack when you do a sheet replacement. Um, we have current limiting power supplies and uh, the um, process of recovering a Roadster battery is tricky to say the least. Um, you can literally burn down a building like we did uh, two years ago if you're not watching that process very carefully. There's some other unusual things about this car. One of them is, we noticed this immediately when we got it off the transporter, it has different brakes than your normal Roadster. These are much larger uh, calipers. They have a sacrificial metal element inside the rotor, and in the back they actually have a double brake arrangement. What we've been told is that uh, this was actually a precursor to, from the White Star project, which eventually became the Model S project, and these brakes look very much like the Model S brakes. The other enhancement to this car is it has uh, suede inserts in the seats, um, which is an unusual option for the Roadster. And um, by the way, the brakes are made by Taxor, T-A-X-O-R. And the final thing that makes this car unique is it has a limited slip differential. Um, there are only two Roadsters known to have this option. One of them is VIN number one, which is owned by Elon Musk, we're told and then this car. When we do a recovery, it generally takes even a level one recovery many weeks to get that battery back to life. What we found with this car, um, it had been bricked for only three weeks. So we told the customer, let's not waste any time, get it in here as fast as we can because we have a 100% success rate bringing these cars back to life if too much time hasn't gone by. So we lined up a transporter. It came out of Malibu, California. Uh, it was here within uh, 48 hours or so after we had uh, placed the, um, uh, the order with the transporter. And it only took 48 hours to recover. So this is our fastest recovery yet. Um, the car was looking pretty sad when it got here. It had been sitting outside. There were bird droppings, stains. Um, so we ended up um, proposing to the owner why don't you let us fix the paint? 
one of the things that we do is with these roadsters is we're able to actually bring paint back to life and here you can see um, what happens to paint to make it look less than stellar scratches swirl marks uh, water etching buffer marks uh, and then scratches of course so this car made a miraculous recovery I think the customer is going to be very happy when they get this back we then decided since these cars are here let's tell the customers about the other cool things we can do to their roadster um, we asked the customer are you planning on keeping this car he said absolutely we then pointed out well your PEM is going on 10 years there are wear components inside the PEM that need to be upgraded and replaced and if you skip that step the PEM could self-destruct we had one in Germany for example where a, uh, um, one of the electrolytic capacitors blew up inside the unit spraying uh, all kinds of aluminum foil inside that PEM potentially shorting out uh, some of the components fortunately that PEM came back to life so this customer also decided while the car is here let's get the PEM upgraded then we told them about the battery relocation that we do there's a 12 volt battery that sits in the front fender in the front that requires quite a bit of work to replace you have to take the wheel off you have to take the arch liner out you have to uh, crawl up inside there get that battery removed and uh, what we do is we actually have a 12 volt battery in the trunk option and now a battery change becomes nothing more than flipping open this case opening the unit taking two fast on tabs off and sliding a new battery in there and a process that used to cost three to four hundred dollars at a service center now costs only the price of the battery because it's a five minute swap and if the customer at some point later wants to change this to a different chemistry like lithium ion it's the same process just simply open the case slide in a new battery and in the meantime this meter tells you what the condition of the battery is so at any point in time if they begin to see that drop they, um, they can take appropriate action. We also suggest to customers that have their cars here, why wait until the, uh, the PEM cooling fan dies? The PEM cooling fan uh, is a 12 volt motor with brushes and bearings and uh, it is a wear item. Uh, to have that replaced at the service center could be over a thousand dollars. While it's here, it's much less expensive to have it changed and uh, start with a new fan. The same is true with the cooling pump that's underneath here. They have two different types. There's an old DC brush motor in the 1.5 version Roadsters, and then there's a magnetic type improvement pump that comes with the later Roadsters. Either of those are wear items, and it makes more sense to change them while they're here. Um, another common problem area with Tesla Roadsters is cracking and peeling headlights. This one had a pretty bad case of that, and uh, what we do is actually sand off the old clear coat. Uh, we then polish back, and we use a two-part epoxy clear coat, which is far more durable, restoring the luster and the shine to that, uh, to that headlight assembly. And then finally, there are the headlight and the interior light upgrades going to LEDs, which are infinitely brighter than the old style uh, headlights and of course they last longer especially inside the cabin. We were initially puzzled um, why the uh, Tesla Roadster battery pack had flat black paint on it. Um, we found out since then that the original manufacturer of the ESS packs was a company in Korea that specialized in making barbecues and when we found that out it suddenly uh, gave us um, an answer as to why they look like a barbecue basically. Um, we um, have some parts roadsters in house. We have some outside here as well and some in the other building. What we're asking roadster owners to do if they, um, if they total their roadster and the insurance company decides it's not, um, it's not worth repairing, contact us and we'll negotiate with the insurance company or let them negotiate for a buy price on that roadster. The reason that's critical is the battery packs are in short supply. The donor um, uh, the donor packs are beginning to shrink in availability and sometimes the only way to get some of these roadsters back on the road is with a donor pack. 
one of the ways that an owner that has just totaled their roadster let their car live on is by offering that as a donor car to make another car operational. If it goes to an insurance company and uh, they send it to auction, we're finding that in a high uh, majority of cases, those cars end up being bricked because they get locked in title jail. It takes months oftentimes to get them through that process and the auction houses, all of them, and we've contacted all of them that have roadsters, refuse to charge the batteries in roadsters. The only way to make sure that that battery pack will remain intact and continue to live is by buying it from the insurance company and then quickly taking it out and uh, uh, continuing to keep it alive and maintain it for a suitable donor car. The, um, the other thing that we do here is we don't just work on roadsters. Um, this is a Model X, for example. We get a lot of salvage cars because Tesla to this day does not uh, service any salvage vehicles. Um, oftentimes, cars like this uh, will be low mileage. They will have some minor damage, but the insurance companies are very quick to total cars like this because they're electric. So people buy these cars and uh, they would like to put them back on the road and that's one of the things that we help with. They may take it to a collision shop and have the paint and body done but by the time they're done they're going to need the electronics work done. They're going to need body control and uh, vehicle control modules realigned with the firmware and that's where we come in. We um, also do of course a lot of Model S's. We, um, we feel that these cars is the next vehicle platform that will eventually go legacy with Tesla as they stop making them. And um, the, uh, the Model S is one of the easier cars to work on. So thank you for taking this tour with us. And uh, make sure that you keep watching out of spec motoring videos as they update uh, what we're doing here and uh, the new projects we're working on.